A few weeks ago, I was sitting and just contemplating this life of awareness. And, you know, I'm still in this phase of this awareness becoming my my natural state or my normal way of experiencing the world as opposed to this other thought-based experience. And so there's still this back and forth that's, that happens. And I was sitting and contemplating this life and it struck me that so much of the purpose and the intent and the goals and the aims and the hopes that have driven so much of my behavior and so much of my thinking my entire life have become completely meaningless. Like when you, when you're trying to achieve some everyday life thing, like getting a better job or budgeting better or becoming fitter and healthier. In that moment it can seem all important. But when you look at it through the lens of impermanence and ask yourself a question like, what will I think about that in 200 years? Then you see really quickly that it's not going to be very long and that, that the success or failure of that endeavour will not matter to anyone. You know, 200 years is a short amount of time. It's a blink in the universe. But even that quickly, anything that is achieved through this, this body in this lifetime will be completely obliterated. And that's, you know, that's not to be negative or dismissive or to say, well, let's not bother then, let's just sit around and wait for the end. It's just to say that when we put things in perspective, we can see what matters and what doesn't. And as, that, as the reality of that dawns for me, my purpose in this moment continues to shift. And the purpose shifts primarily from planning for my future self's needs to practicing awareness, trying to live as awareness now. And as you move along the path as well, you'll find that this happens too. That there, there can be a moment of almost feeling lost because it, all the compass points that you navigated your life by are no longer very important. And we're so conditioned to do things for a purpose in our everyday life that this can make it really difficult. But what becomes clear when we get comfortable in this space is that actually living without this sense of life and death purpose is much, much more enjoyable. And actually, this was how you lived for many of your early years, even though the storyteller was getting a stronger and stronger hold on you as you got older. But if you look back to when you were five or six or seven, and look at why did you do the things that you did, 
you know, why did you swing on the monkey bars? Did you do it because you really wanted to have strong bones when you were 65 and you read an article that said that you know, swinging on the monkey bars helps with shoulder strength and reduces the risk of dislocation when you're in your 70s? Well, of course not. And when you played a game with your friends, did you play it because you thought that if you succeeded at that game, then you might get invited to play an even more important game and one day you might be the world champion of games and everyone would respect you. Well, no, you just... Everyone was playing a game and it looked fun. So you played. And in these days and these years, we lived through play and we lived our life as if it was a game. Now when you went into class and you, you know, did some funny things to upset the teacher or you made some jokes that made your friends laugh, you, know, you, weren't, you weren't doing it because it seemed like the best option for your future. You were just playing, just enjoying. And perhaps the reason that adults and children have so much conflict in the way they see the world, perhaps that's because children are living this game of life, whereas adults are in a tactical battle to try and get their future self what they think it needs. But as we move into this life of awareness, we're actually moving back into that game-based way of living. And we're beginning to live each day as if it was a game, as if it was just for fun with no future plans. And this is actually how I live now. Although the, the sensible adult still wants to, to do sensible things and think carefully about them, the, this, as this awareness comes forward, I've found myself living a much more spontaneous life. So late the year before last, I... My wife and I, we sold our house, we bought a caravan, we bought a car that could tow it, and we've lived in that caravan ever since with our three children. And we just travel around, and when we're running out of money, then we stop and we work, and we explore an area, and then when we want to, we move on. And we make friends, and we play, and we do things, and we meet people. And then, when the time seems right, we just shuffle off to the next place. Lots of challenges in that, but we love it. Kids love it. And so this week, just this week, I started a new job, having finished my last job a couple of weeks back. And as I do that job, I know that if it doesn't suit me, I'll just find another job. I know that if I don't suit the team, I'll just go and find a new job. And I know that none of what I do today ultimately matters. And in that, I actually try my best because I'm not concerned about the result. But I'm driven by the enjoyment of the game itself. So when you see kids playing, you know, a game of football or a game of handball or jumping rope, 
Now you often see that they are really running fast, they're really working hard, they're really doing their best in the game, even if no one's keeping score, because they're just in love with chasing the ball in that moment. And they don't care about how skilled or unskilled they are, or whether it's going to work out or not. They're just going for it. And the more, the more the, the false drops away in your life and awareness comes to the surface, this is what will happen. His life will become a game. So I've given you some written reflection to do about this for today. And I trust that we'll be speaking again tomorrow as we come to the, the homeward end of this journey together.